Over the years, we've done tons of videos letting you know about the most common settings in Windows to change. In this video, whether you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, we'll be taking a deeper dive into some of the lesser known settings that can improve your overall experience when using Windows. Let's get started. If you do work in the evenings, enabling the nightlight feature can help to reduce blue light on your screen, making it easier on your eyes and help you to sleep. Instead of turning it on or off manually, many people don't know that you can schedule it in settings for a specific period of time. To open settings, you could right click the start menu and select it, or use the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus I. With system selected on the left, go to display here on the right. In brightness and color, you can leave nightlight turned off, click into nightlight, enable schedule nightlight. You have two choices from sunset to sunrise, or you can select your own hours for it to automatically turn on. If you set it to sunset to sunrise, which is what I do, this knows when it occurs in your area. One annoyance for Windows 10 users when upgrading to Windows 11 is having the start menu and taskbar icons centered rather than on the left. Many people think this is the way it is and can't be changed. Good news, it can. To go back to the old way of having it aligned to the left, in settings, go to personalization. Over here on the right, scroll down, select taskbar. If you need to, scroll down again and select taskbar behaviors. Select the drop down for taskbar alignment and click on left. And as you'll see, everything is now aligned to the left. You can always change it back to center later on if you want. Just like Nightlight mentioned earlier, Do Not Disturb can be auto enabled as well for specific times, have it activate while you're playing a game or when duplicating your display for a presentation. This silences notifications, sounds, and alerts. To do this in settings with system selected, go to notifications. Do not disturb can be manually enabled when you need it. To automate it, click into turn on do not disturb automatically. Your choices here during these times lets you choose when do not disturb turns on and off. When duplicating your display is for presentations for work or school as an example. When playing a game, when using an app in full screen mode, and the last one here, for the first hour after a Windows feature update. You can select more than one of these, or all if you want. Just like their mobile counterparts, you can assign permissions to apps on Windows. Is it just me? Calling them apps on a desktop computer just sounds silly. I still prefer the words program or software better, even though they're the same thing, but moving on. In settings, go to privacy and security. Scroll down to the app permissions section. Here you can see who has permissions to your location, camera, and microphone. Here you can enable and disable permissions. Let's take a look at microphone. Here you can enable and disable permissions. I'm going to turn some of these off right now. Arc Browser, Microsoft's Feedback Hub, ShareX, and the Windows subsystem for Android and Android apps. You might want to go into your app permissions for location, camera, and microphone to check these out for yourself. If you want to automatically free up space, delete temporary files, and manage locally available cloud content, you should enable Storage Sense. In Settings, in System, click on Storage. In Storage Management, click the Storage Sense toggle to enable it. Click into Storage Sense. Make sure the box is checked next to Keep Windows Running Smoothly by Automatically Cleaning Up Temporary System and App Files. Scroll down here a little bit and configure cleanup schedules. You can have it automatically set to run every day, every week, every month, and the default is during low free disk space. I prefer every week. It will auto delete files in your recycle bin anywhere from one day up to 60 days, or you could have it set to never. I prefer 14 days. And you can have it set to delete files in your downloads folder from one day up to 60 days. This one I prefer never. And in locally available cloud content, it will auto delete content you have on your computer, making it available only online. And here's your choices. From one day up to 60 days, the default is never. For me personally, never is the best choice. 
Being able to sync your copying and pasting history with multiple Windows devices is a handy feature. To enable it in settings, choose System, then scroll way down until you see Clipboard. Click into it. Make sure that Clipboard History is turned on. Next, turn on Clipboard History across your devices. You have the choice to automatically or manually sync the text you copy. I prefer automatic. Most of us have had a program get hung up that won't close. Even when you go to the taskbar, right click and select close window and end up having to go to the task manager to force it closed, ending the task. You can now end a task in the taskbar by enabling the setting. In settings, in system, scroll down to four developers and select it. For this one, you don't need to have developer mode enabled. Just go down to end task and turn it on. Now you won't need to open the task manager to end any task. Just right click the programs icon that is giving you trouble and select end task. Voice access is a cool feature that's helpful for dictating documents to opening menus and launching programs. To enable it in settings, go to accessibility, go down to the interaction section and select speech. Voice access is the replacement of Windows speech recognition, which will be ending support soon. You can have voice access start up before you sign into your computer or right after you sign in. Let's enable voice access. The phrase to have it listen, voice access, wake up, open, brave. Voice access, wake up, close, brave. If you're on a data plan with your internet service provider with a low data allowance, setting a data limit warning might help you to not exceed your limit. Here's how to do it. In settings, go to network and internet. Scroll down and select advanced network settings. Then select data usage. At the top, select your Wi-Fi or ethernet connection. Click enter limit. You can select the limit type the day of the month you want it to reset, and the data limit with the appropriate unit. After clicking on save, you'll get a warning whenever you get close to reaching your set unit. When your computer starts up, unnecessary services and apps can have a negative impact on performance. You should disable those you don't need when your computer boots up. While this can still be done in the task manager, I'll show you how to do this in settings. In settings, select the apps tab, then click on startup. Go through all those you know you don't need at startup and disable them. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What settings do you change in Windows to improve your overall experience? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell to not miss out on our latest videos for Windows and other tech-related stuff here on Brett in Tech.